Hi, I'm Ryan Brandon. I'm welcome to my basement. Today we'll be talking to Connor Lennon, a video game enthusiast, enthusiastic, and Eric King, the torchbearer. Now, Connor, how are you today? I'm fine, Ryan. How are you? Very good, good. Uh, now, I hear you're big into your video games. Oh, I'm mad into video games, Ryan. Well, Always have been. But, yeah, and well, what type of video games and when did it start? Well, it started when I was about two years old. My parents used to drag me to people's houses, like, to sit me in front of the TV, you know, just to keep me quiet for two hours. I was screaming little. <laughs> anyway, uh, this one time, they took me to my uncle's. He had just bought the new Nintendo console for his daughter. Dad's Legend of Zelda game. So it stuck me in front of that, and after a couple of hours, I was absolutely hooked on the little sprites walking across the screen. I'm actually familiar with Legend of Zelda. How many were made altogether? Uh, Fifteen to date. And um, there was three others, but they're not really counted. Um, and what's the newest one? And what console is that on? Uh, Spirit Tracks was just released for about Christmas uh, on the DS. Oh, okay. Yeah, my daughter has that one. I didn't, didn't like her playing it. So, uh, any other um, like uh, genres you're into? Well, I'm mad into RPGs mostly, but uh, I tend to play stuff like uh, action adventure games like Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, or shoot 'em ups like uh, Call of Duty or Doom. Call of Duty, I'm looking at that game. It's a game where you go around killing Nazis. Like, yeah. There's just a lot of John Belling saluting people and you're just killing them. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's a good time. And um, so, like, what other hobbies do you have? Well, I'm a big fan of anime and um, I tend to draw a lot in my free time because I'm a published manga artist and I do a lot of voice acting when I get jobs. Voice acting? Anything we know of in particular? Uh, one may, you may know is um, I did an episode of Bubblegum Crisis 2028 for ADV Films about three years ago. Mm -hmm. I just played a cop in one episode who got killed, uh, so it just involved screaming into a, a microphone for several hours. Cool, and was it well paid? It was 200 euro for the entire session, so. Well, happy days, now happy days. Now, um, do you play sports at all in that? Yeah, uh, one, I'm a black belt in kendo, so. Kendo, interesting, interesting. Now on that note, I'll stop you there, we're going to go to Eric King, he's going to show us how to put batteries into a torch. Some say he's the oldest man in IDT. He is the oldest man in IDT. Over to you, Eric. Oh, sorry, I love torches. Um, hi. I'm Eric, I am the Light King, and I'm here to discuss torches and their role in society and how they're invented. Torches were invented in 1927 by Dr. Henry J. Wilhelm Torchison. He used to like picking carrots in his back garden. At night time he would go out with the candle and he'd look picking his carrots and he'd bend over but he'd burn off his eyebrows. So he just got really frustrated with this and he went into his wife and together they invented the first ever torch, which was powered by a piece of celery, an elastic band, and two lumps of steak, which was powered by a gerbil on a wheel that spun around, and he mixed them all together and created an electric charge. That is how the torch was invented. Torches can be used in many situations. I prefer to use my torches down alleyways because you can see where you're going, and what you are doing down the alleyway is up to the court to the side. Um, you can put torches in your handbag, like I do, or you can also put them in your pocket. Is that a torch in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> ah, I wrote that one myself. <laughs> so, let's see. We'll show how to put batteries into the torch. Firstly, you twist off the lid. You get your battery. Batteries are always flat at the end, and they also have a nipple on top. See the nipple there? You put the flat end first into the battery, or into the torch, you get your other battery, flat end at the bottom, and again the little nipple at the top, see it there? It's the nipple's the one that sticks out. Then you put it in, you get the top of the torch, and you twist it on. Right, now let's see, does this work? You ready? <laughs> you ready to be blown away? It's not working. Um, uh, I, I have an idea. Uh, could everybody at home do this, please? Connor, Marlo, could you help along? All the cameramen, can you do this, please? Okay, we'll try it again. Jesus, there we go, look at that. Many hands make light work. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much. Back to Marlo. Thanks, Eric, for that great demonstration. Now, on next week's show, we'll be talking to Gavin Duffy and his close encounter with some aliens. Um, they weren't aliens. That was me and Navin uh, doing a torch demonstration, and they all thought it was a UFO, because there's no electricity up there. Back to Marlo. Thanks, Eric, for that useful information. Next week's show should be even better. You stay classy. Blu-ray. <laughs>
Thanks, Kev, do you have your suit jacket I can wear? Kev. Can, can I wear 